Hey guys, so in this video I want to show you how to solve pendulum problems when we don't know the initial height. Let's check it out. So it says here in some pendulum problems you won't be given heights and we'll need to use what I'm going to call the pendulum equation and I'll show you how to get that equation, okay? So you're going to use the energy equation with the pendulum equation. The reason why we need the, we're going to use the energy equation is because all pendulum problems are solved that way because you have motion from one point to another along a curved path, okay? So it says a pendulum is built from a one kilogram bob, so this is the mass here, m equals one, that has a length of two meters. So that's the length of this rope here. Length equals two. The rope is light as always, which means the rope is massless, okay? The pendulum is attached to the ceiling and released from rest from 37 degrees with the vertical. That means that this angle over here is a 37. Um, and that's how we're going to um, almost always uh, describe angle, uh, the angle for pendulums. And that's because the pendulum is going to move from here to here, back and forth. Um, so the angle is always crossing the y-axis. So instead of using the angle with the x-axis as usual for pendulums, you're going to use the vertical angle. All right, so that's how it's always going to go. Um, this pendulum is going to go from here to here at the same exact height. If it starts at 37 degrees there, at the other end here, it's going to make an angle of 37 degrees as well. I'm going to call this beginning point here A, uh, the bottom here B, and then the other side where it stops C. Here we want to know what is the pendulum's maximum speed. The maximum speed is at the bottom, V max or V bottom or VB. I want to know the velocity at B and I know some information about the beginning at A. I know that the angle starts at 37. So I'm going to write an energy equation again because it's a curved path from A to B. Ka, Ua, work non-conservative, Kb, Ub. Kinetic energy at point A doesn't exist because you're releasing this thing from rest, right? It's released from rest from 37 degrees. There is some potential energy here because there's a height. Remember in these problems, because we don't know this gap here, what we do is instead of calling the floor R0, we're going to call this R0, and you have to do that here. Um, however, I don't know this height here. I know the angle but I, and the length of the plane, but I don't know this height here. So we don't know HA, but it is above zero, so there is potential energy. We'll get to that uh, in a bit. Work non-conservative is the work done by you, you're just watching, uh, or the work done by any kind of external force, um, plus the work done by friction. There is no friction. Now, just to be clear, there is tension pulling on this thing, um, but the work done by tension is zero because tension is a is a um, centripetal force here. It's pulling towards the center. And remember that the work done by centripetal forces is always zero, okay? And mg is not a conservative force. mg is, I'm sorry, mg is not non-conservative, so mg doesn't go there, right? Um, so this is zero because there's no work done by you or friction. Kinetic energy, there's a kinetic energy at point B because we're gonna get there with some speed, but there's no potential energy at point B because we set the height to be zero at the lowest point. All right, so we end up with MGH equals to half MV squared. The masses cancel, and VB is going to be the square root of 2GHA. Um, this, again, shows up a lot, right? The problem here is that I don't have the height of A, and that's where the pendulum equation comes in. The pendulum equation I'll show you in a second will connect these three variables. Length of pendulum, initial angle of the pendulum, and initial height of the pendulum. As, as, as long as you have any two of these, you can find a third one, and I'll show you in a second. In this case, I have these two, which allows us to find H initial, which is what I need here. All right, so here's how the, how the pendulum equation works, um, and you may need to use this um, in a test, so you may need to know how to do this, all right? So, I'm going to draw a, here's our rope with the pendulum, this is the ceiling, here's the pendulum at its initial position, and here's the pendulum at the very bottom, okay? So first things first, this has a length of L, and this has a length of L as well, because it's the same rope, right? Now this is kind of a exaggerated angle there, uh, let me just kind of draw this a little bit more realistic. 
all right and this thing is going to do this now i need you to remember two things once you draw this first you're going to draw a line through here um, one way to remember that is that a lot of things in physics are going to be triangles right so we're going to turn this sort of semi uh, this piece of a circle um, into a once i draw a line here i have a triangle right there so I need you to remember to draw this line here. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to write two expressions for the same line. We're going to write two, um, not two equations, we're going to write two expressions, two ways of describing this line here. I'm going to put two green lines there. And by the way, this is our angle. The first one is the simpler one. Well, this if this is my H, which it is, and this is my L, this gap here is the whole thing minus this so this gap here is L minus H and this is the first way that I can express this green line here L minus H the second way I can express it is using um, trig right so I can use Sokatoa to express it now the simplest way here is to just realize that this side this is the opposite to that angle so this one is the adjacent and from Sokatoa if you have the hypotenuse and the adjacent, you're talking about cosine, right? So another way that I can express this green line here is with L cosine of theta, all right? Now these two are equivalent ways of expressing it, which means I can set them equal to each other. L minus H equals L cosine of theta. And this is the pendulum equation. If your professor gives you this, awesome. You can just use it. But if he expects you to derive it or show how you got to it, you might need to, you would need to draw this and sort of show your work towards here. Um, if you don't remember how to derive this equation, uh, you should still memorize it so you can use it, at least get most of the partial credit um, if you get partial credit in your tests. And, you know, maybe you could just quickly jot down a, a thing like this and draw a bunch of these curly braces which at least make it seem like you were going in the right direction in terms of deriving this equation even if you don't remember all the details all right so again if you see some of this stuff in your homework or in class you might want to be ready for a question like this cool so the variables are l h and theta and you can see how if i have two of them i can find the other one um, if i'm looking for h i'm going to move h to the right side and I'm going to move L cosine of theta to the other side. Okay, This is how you can find H. Now, if you want to get fancy, you could factor out L. You don't have to do that. That's just a little bit more, um, more work. But I'll do it so you know you can do it, but you could have just plugged in numbers here. The length is 2, 1 minus the cosine of 37. Your calculator obviously has to be in degrees. And when you do this, you get a height of 0.4. Okay, 0.4 is what's going to go right here. So VB is the square root of 2, 10.4, which means that the velocity over there will be 2.83 meters per second. That is our final speed at the bottom. Cool? So that's how this works. Let me know if you guys have any questions. There's I have a practice problem here for you that's very similar. You're going to need to use the pendulum equation. Um, you should maybe practice trying to go from here, right, to the equation. But if you can't quite get it, at least you know that you can use that equation and you're going to have to use it uh, on this one. It's a little bit more complicated, but I think you can figure it out. Let me know if you have any questions.